to Mars Guru Educational Services. If you are studying with us on Mars Guru channel for the first time or you have not subscribed to our channel, please kindly subscribe and comment so we'll be able to serve you better. Um, today we are going to discuss our partial major of central tendency and uh, skillness. A quick drop from us in response to a request by one of the students on the platform that will make a video on this uh, very question to assist those who are having challenges or difficulties in uh, calculation. The question is about charts. That is for the first one. The second one is um, major of central tendency I believe you can answer that question we have it in our, our last video previous video we've sent on this uh, platform and um, okay this is still talking about uh, table understanding the statistical table please if you have not watched that you can do it now and uh, this one we have not touched before uh, skewness and um, okay determination of the mood from uh, given mean median and standard deviation all right quickly we we may give this a uh, try to see if we can solve the questions all right the first question the average score of master's education students in edu to one for five years are as follows given here and we are to use partials to represent the data Briefly, a partial is a means of um, data representation in which a circle is divided into uh, sectors and each sector represents the score or the data in the distribution. For instance, we have one two three four five it means this circle is going to be divided into five sectors and each sector will represent the scores we have here the data we have here for 2012 2013 2014 2015 and 2016 all right but how do we represent this data here the first thing to do is here we have this going to serve as a score, the frequency. So we have uh, 60, 39, 41, 46, 38. We have to calculate the total scores we have here. And uh, this will be equal to, you can confirm, 224. So we have 224 scores as a whole. All right. The next thing is to find the angular size of this score in reference to the total score. So to do that, we know that the angle at a point is equal to 360 degrees 360 degrees that is the sum of angles at a point so we are going to divide these 360 degrees based on the fraction of each of these scores very simple all right, the fraction of the score in 2012, 2013, 
12 so the total score is equal to that is for 2012 we have we're going to have 60 over 224 to know the angular size we simply multiply it by the total angle which is 360 and when we do this we're going to have um, 96.4 approximately 96.4 degrees approximately okay for 2013 the fraction of the score is 39 over 224 and to get the angular size we multiply it by 360 and this will give 62.7 degrees for 2014 the fraction of the score there is 41 over 224 to get the angular size we multiply it by 360 degrees and this will give um, 69 oh 65 that is 65.9 degrees for 2015 the fraction of the score is 46 over 224 to get the angular size we multiply it by 360 degrees and that will be equal to 73.9 degrees and the last uh, year there 2016 the fraction of the score is 38 over 224 to get the angular size we multiply it by 360 and this we give um, 61.1 degree now you can check this to be sure add all these angular um, sizes we have they should be equal to 360 degrees so we can now represent the information on the power chart so for the first um, year that is 2012 okay we need to have a starting point so all right if we have this we are going to measure the angle 96.4 you can use your protractor but i i don't think it's compulsory here so you can just assume the angle here is more than 96 i mean uh, 90 degrees so you know that uh, 90 is right angle so let the angle just be more than 90 a bit more than 90 you can just assume so we have um, 96.4 and representing 2012 for 2013 the angular size is 62.7 is not up to 90 so 62 can be like this 62.7 so this will represent 2013 then for 2014 the angular size is a bit more than that of 2013 so we're going to have something like this wow okay so we are going to have um, 
65.9 representing 2014 then 2015 the angular size is 73 so we have um, 73 okay so this is 73.9 Presenting 2015, and then finally we have um, 61.1, 61.1, representing 2016. By so doing, we have represented the data. Um, a power chart using this uh, power chart to represent the data given the information given to us here so the question number one a completely solved please if you do not understand the procedure backward your video as many times as possible to understand and you can also comment Shout me directly and I will respond. For this, we have list the three commonest type of central tendency. Very simple. Uh, in our last video, I discussed um, uh, the measures of central tendency. The mean, which is the sum of the scores of the distribution divided by the number or numbers of score we have in the distribution. We have um, two, the median, which is the middle score when arranged in ascending order or descending order of magnitude. And uh, the third one is uh, the mood. The mood is the score that appears the most. The mood is the score that appears the most. For instance, if we have this distribution, 2, 3, 4, 2, 6, 2, uh, 3, the mode here is simply two because it appears three times so the mode is equal to two for the median we need to arrange this distribution in ascending or descending order so we have to arrange two appears three times we have three appearing three times two times okay Four appeared only one time and then we have a six so we look for the score that appears at the middle okay so three appears at the middle so that becomes the the median and for the mean we have to sum all this data together sum everything And then divide it by the total number of the scores we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And divide it by 7. You get the mean. Alright, we have another question. Enumerate four key steps you would follow to draw a frequency distribution table. The first step is to find the range. The range is simply the highest value or highest score minus the lowest score. Like this distribution we have here, to determine the range, we have the highest score being 6 and the lowest score is 2. So we simply say the range is equal to 6 minus 2 and that will give 
4. So 4 is the range. Then the next thing to do is to decide on how many classes or groups you want. So it depends on the number of groups you want. Um, the recommended uh, numbers of group is um, 5 to 20. 5 to 20 if you have a, a large or a larger distribution you should have about 5 to 20 and if you have a smaller one uh, just a small distribution we have um, something like 5 to 10 is enough for uh, a small number of distribution then the next thing to consider is the width of the class in our a topic uh, understanding the statistical table I discussed how to find the width of a distribution there we subtract the lower class boundary of the group or of a class from that of the upper class boundary we have the width for instance if we have a class like this 5 to 10 the lower class boundary will be 4.5 and the upper class boundary will be 10.5 to get the width we simply subtract this from here 0.5 minus 4.5 and we have our width then the last thing to consider there is to group the scores and tally so you have to use tally to count the scores we have in the order that are given in the distribution so to know the number of times each of these um, scores appear i believe this is uh, answered correctly you can backward your video to understand the steps clearly then the last um, question here Okay, sorry. The mean age and median of ODL students in research methods, okay, research methods class were 60 and 58 respectively. If the standard deviation is 7.5, what is the coefficient of skillness of the student's age? okay very simple um before then i wrote this to assist us okay skillness can be seen as a representation of the extent to which a given distribution varies from a normal distribution the extent to which a given distribution varies from a normal distribution so a normal distribution has a skew of zero. So the extent to which uh, a given distribution varies from this uh, normal distribution uh, skew, which is zero, is what we refer to as skewness. So the coefficient compares, we have um, uh, two methods, uh, okay, about four anyway, uh, types of skillness there the first skillness compares the um, the mode and the the mean where we have um, skillness one and that is skillness one the first method we have the mean minus the mode over the standard deviation the mean minus the mode divided by the standard deviation the second one compares the the mean and the median so that is a second uh, method is equal to 3 into the mean minus the median if we okay we can use this for the median okay median but 
know that MD here means median over the standard deviation. You may use S as well. You can use S. It's still uh, the same expression, but know what you are doing. So for this, we have the mean minus the mode over the standard deviation. For the second method, we have 3 into the mean minus the median. This time is the median over the standard deviation. So the coef this coefficient or um, piercing coef coefficient of uh, skewness compares the sample distribution with a normal distribution. The larger the value, the larger the distribution differs from a normal distribution. So if the the value we're going to have here is equal to zero, for instance, then it means that the, the there is no skewness at all, no skewness at all. If we have something, um, maybe we have larger negative uh, value, let's say zero my zero negative. 0 0.56 whatever negative 36.5 whatever all these numbers negative values then it means that the distribution is negatively skewed and if we have instead of negative values we have positive values then it means it is positively skewed take note of this these are very essential now, uh, back to the question. We are to calculate the, the coefficient of skewness. The coefficient of skewness. E of the student's age, if we have this, the mean 60. Let's quickly bring out our data. The mean is equal to 60. And the median, median is equal to 58. All right. The standard deviation is equal to 7.5. All right. If you take a look at this, we cannot use this um, first method because the mode is not given. We are even required to find the mood, to calculate the mood. So since the mood is not given, we can't use this first method. Instead, we're going to use the second method. All right, we are going to substitute the values we have here into the expression. The coefficient of skewness is equal to 3 into the mean is 60. The median is given as 58, and the standard deviation is given as 7.5. All right, so we're going to have um, 3 into 60 minus 58 is 2 over 7.5 equal to 3 times 2. Anytime we have something in bracket like this, it means we multiply the number outside the bracket by the one inside the bracket and that will give us three times two six seven point five all right six divided by seven point five we have zero point eight it means this uh, distribution is positively skewed all right the last question there is to calculate the modal weight from the, the distribution given, from the data given there. We have to calculate the modal weight. It's quite simple. We already know the mean. We know the standard deviation. And we do not know the mode. But we have now determined the skewness the skewness which is 0 0.8 so we're going to lift this um, second um, I mean uh, the first 
method here which we have as coefficient of skewness is equal to the median sorry the mean minus the mode over the standard deviation the coefficient of uh, skewness is equal to 0 0.8 the mean given is uh, 60, right? The mean is 60. Let's quickly put that there. 60 minus the mode we do not know. The standard deviation is 0 0.5. Let's go back. You see that it's given as 7.5, sorry. So we have 7.5. So at this point, we are going to cross multiply. Make this over 1 and cross multiply. You multiply, cross multiplication simply means you multiply what is here by what is here. Then you multiply this by what is here. So we have 0 0.8 times 7.5 times... 7.5 and this we give uh, 6 so we have 6 equal to 1 times 60 which is 60 1 times negative m we give the mode all right now to get the mode we we have to arrange so we collect the like terms and to do this, we simply move 60 to this other side. Or let's move the negative number. This is mathematics. We're going to move this negative mode across the equation sign. And whenever a number which is negative is crossing the equation sign, it becomes positive. That is, our mode now becomes positive. And we have it equal to, we have the 60 there before, put it there, 60. Then, this is going to cross the equation sign again to this other side. So, as this is crossing the equation sign, it becomes negative 6. You know that it is positive here. Anytime there is no sign before a number, it means it is positive. So we're going to have the mode to be equal to 60 minus 6, which is equal to 54. It means the mode is 54. And the skewness is 0 0.8. If you like this uh, video, please don't forget to subscribe. Just subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you.